When it comes to new Resident Evil games, the last couple of years have been more jam-packed than a zombie in an RPD locker. With the remakes for 2 and 3, and the 4v1 co-op game Resistance now in the rear view, the focus has well and truly shifted to the next mainline entry, Resident Evil 8 Edge, finally arriving in May 2021. A direct follow-up to 2017's Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, we are now closer than ever to seeing what promises to be a mind-bending and truly creepy AF experience as we unravel what mysteries await Ethan Winters, who seeks to rescue his kidnapped daughter. So what else can we expect from Capcom's next generation in survival horror? We quiz members of the community to get some thoughts. I'm James from First Aid Spray, and this is 5 things we want to see in Resident Evil Village. Wider Resident Evil lore tie-ins Resident Evil 7 is a superb game, it's something pretty much everyone can agree on. However, as good as it is, the game left some fans feeling like it was a little too detached from the rest of the series that had been set up before it, feeling very much like a side story rather than a main entry. It brought some new concepts to the table without much in the way of explanations on how they connected to the wider RE universe. The mold was a real shift in direction from the type of bioweaponry we'd seen before, and Village has the opportunity to not only answer some of the questions we had about RE7, but expand on the story, and link it back into the giant sewer spider web that is Resident Evil lore. How will the Dimitrescu family slot in? Is the fact they all seem to be female to be a hint at the connection to the E series? And just who the hell is Ethan Winters really? Why should we care about him? Is he Jill's long lost twin brother? Maybe Blue Umbrella created him in a lab and needs to protect their asset? Whatever the case, we'd like to see more RE connective lore come this May. And with Chris Redfield seemingly about to play a much bigger and hairier part than his tiny cameo at the end of RE7, it looks like we may get it. I'm Redfield. I'm glad we found you. Somewhere to hide. Something RE7 and both the recent 2 and 3 remakes have in common is that they feature a big scary stalker. Whether it's Jack, Mr. X or Nemesis, there's always been some angry stomping presence, hunting you down at various points in the game. Okay, RE3 stripped this back a bit, but Nemi still rocked up on you if you spent too long window shopping in downtown Raccoon. The stalker concept in gaming is nothing new. It wasn't until 2014's Alien Isolation that we really saw this mechanic taken to the next level with an effectively perfect organism in the form of the Xenomorph, allowing for a truly nerve-wracking and controller-gripping experience. Though not officially confirmed, it appears the Stalkers are returning in Village in the form of Lady Dimitrescu and her daughters. Holy crapolies, this looks scary. In RE7, you could hide in the shadows. In RE2 Remake, you could take refuge in the save rooms. And in RE3 Remake, a toy shop was also your sanctuary. In Alien Isolation, however, you could also hide under desks and inside lockers. There is very few things more terrifying than the long tail of the Xenomorph draping over the desk past your face, or seeing those shiny metallic teeth glisten through the slots in a locker door as it tried to sniff you out. It really did make you hold your breath, and then suddenly having the door ripped open as you were dragged out to your doom was truly heart-stopping. It seems that in Village, we're exploring some huge environments, including Lady D's castle, and we absolutely want to be able to hide in those big antique wardrobes, peeking through the door crack as Lady All Legs walks by. Imagine hiding under a four-poster bed, thinking you're safe, only to be dragged out by the daughters and clawed to death. Ah, and shaken already. <laughs> Duck and roll. Don't worry, nobody's on fire here, but ducking and rolling to some degree is something we want to see in Village. The RE3 remake had the return of Jill Valentine's famous dodge, first used in the original. With your back to the wall, it was a handy way to escape the now much larger crowd of zombies on screen, without having to use the last of those precious handgun rounds. In the remake, we also had the addition of an MGS5 style slow-mo sequence, allowing you to place a headshot after a successful dodge. This suited the amped up action well, and it's this kind of dodge feature that could very much be needed in Village. Judging from the small amount of gameplay we've seen, we're going to be dealing with enemies that can literally take form right next to you, along with the giant hairy monsters swinging even bigger hammers. It may take more than 180 quick turn for Ethan to escape these new dangers, 
so the addition of a dodge to help get around those pesky daughters and such would be most welcome. A definitive ranking system and more unlockables. RE7 didn't have an obvious ranking system, there was no C to S and S plus that you could achieve, and instead the game's results screen just showed you some stats such as playtime and healing items used. Unlockable items were based on those stats, the difficulty and destroying the Mr. Everywhere statues. These items are also a little unconventional for the series, for example, Secrets of Defense allowed you to take less damage while blocking, hmm, riveting. They suited the context of the game, but where was the infinite rocket launcher and alternate costumes? Dressing up Ethan doesn't make much sense, this being a first person game, but alternate outfits have been a staple of Resident Evil since the very beginning, so why not something for Mia, or even Jack? Just more cosmetic alternatives would be a fun addition in Village. When it comes to ranking, this isn't a big deal to many gamers, but there are players amongst us that love a challenge, and want to achieve that highest possible score and have fun with some silly weapons as a reward. A return to the more definitive and classic ranking system which was first used way back in 1998's RE2 would really give Village that Resident Evil game feel when it comes to completing it. There's something iconic about the S rank, and it also deepens the categories when it comes to competitive play, a community which has exploded in recent years thanks to the rise in popularity of streaming, esports, and speedrunning which the remakes very much feed into, so giving us that clear grade how to finish it in the game is an aspect that would add classic replay value. Photo Mode Yes, please, come on now Capcom, we're at a point in gaming where virtual photography has followings and communities as large as those of the games themselves. In recent years, more and more games have been adding photo modes with more advanced features and with content creation as big as it is, it may not be long before this is a standard for all new games. The recent Resident Evil games lack this option, and it's such a shame when you consider the incredible beauty of the RE engine and detail that's gone into the game environments and character models. PC users have enjoyed the ability to do more advanced screenshot saving and mods to move the camera independently, but a fully fledged photo mode included in the game that allows players on all platforms to get snap happy is a must have. Village looks like a stunning game, and if it launches without a built-in photo mode, it's going to feel like a bigger mission. All that being said though, the first person nature of the game may restrict this, so we're not confident this will be a feature, especially if Ethan's face is just a shadowy unseen void like the promo images suggest. We can only dream, but if photo mode is a feature in Village, expect much spamming on social media in May. So there we have it. That's five things the first aid spray community would like to see in Resident Evil Village. What about you? Do you have anything on your wish list? Please let us know in the comments as we'd love to hear it. Join us on Discord to continue this discussion and come and get excited with us for the next big RE game. I've been James from First Aid Spray and... Oh, sorry, important telephone call here. Uh, one moment. Mother Moist. I regret to inform you that Ethan has escaped. Um, why is he such a problem? Because he is in my nest and has already proven too much for my outlets to handle. Remember how important he is to us. Yes, of course. I understand the importance of the ceremony. Make sure that you do. I won't let you down.